Hey guys, it's me again, and I'm here yet with another Pi game tutorial. And today we're gonna be creating this game called Simon Says, or at least I think that's the name for it. Let me just show you what is it. I'm sure you all remember when you were kids, or at least I remember when I was a kid, I used to play this game which was like a circle and it had all these four colors and each of them make a different noise and then the computer gives you a sequence and you have to press in the right colors and if you make a mistake it just starts again. So let me just demonstrate this. Uh, so it started with the green so I have to click on the green and then it gives another sequence and I have to click on them and then it keeps going and it's always a randomized sequence as well okay let's try this and yeah the computer gives you a sequence and then it just waits until you give an input and the score is always marked in here on the top as well we also have a high score if you know me from my previous videos I really like putting a high score in there on a separate file so every time you close and open again it's always there your high score and yeah I already don't remember what was the sequence so if you make a mistake let's say here then it just gives this animation and then it starts again and in the score resets and you can just play the game again okay so this code uh, I based on uh, there is a book called making games with pi game and I saw this code in there a long time ago and then I just decided to like kind of recreate that code so I kind of use the same uh, template that they give in there I just add the high score obviously in there and then I just made it a bit more organized the code as well and so okay let's start so I went ahead I created myself a folder in here which I have the main file in here a settings file and a sprites file they are all empty at the moment so if you saw my previous tutorials they all have the same files so I like uh, I like uh, working like this with different files uh, so let's put this on the side for the settings again I'm just gonna copy the settings that I have in here so all the colors we're going to be adding a few more colors that we had from the previous tutorial. So the previous tutorial had the tile, uh, the tile number. You can copy those settings, some of the, those colors, but you're going to have to add some of this. So I think dark, because we have a green, and we have dark green, we have blue, we have dark blue, we have red, dark red, yellow, and yellow, uh, dark yellow because of the animation. So when we press the button in here you see the animation flashes so now it's a dark red but when I click on it it flashes the light red okay so that's why we have all these colors and we also have white black dark gray and we're just setting the background to the dark gray so just pause the video in here if you want to just copy this and we're gonna add some more settings in here as well so we're gonna have some game settings and so we're gonna have a width for the window which is gonna be 640 and a height of 500 okay so the FPS I always like to use 60 but you can put it less if you like if you want a bit slower uh, title we're just gonna put it Simon Says button size uh, it's gonna be 200 so that's just gonna be the button size it's gonna be 200 pixel we're gonna have this also animation speed which is gonna be the animation of the flashing so this you can change it so you put less it's gonna be a bit faster if you put more it's gonna be a bit slower and we're gonna be working with the Pi game mixer to make the sounds so we need these variables here which are gonna be each of the beeps or each of the sound for each of the, the buttons so we're gonna have beep 1 uh, beep 2 beep 3 and beep 4 and the beep 1 we're gonna set to each so these beeps are gonna be each of the frequency of each of the sounds of the buttons 
So the first one is going to be 880, the frequency, and the second one is going to be 659, and the beep 3 is 554, and the last one is the 440. So these are very specific numbers. It's when you lose on the game, it plays all the beeps at the same time. So I just got it this into a scale basically to play a nice sound and not a uh, very horrible sound basically. So that's why they're very specific numbers in here. Okay, so that's all for the settings. Uh, you can pause the video here if you want to just copy, finish copying the, the colors and all of this game settings. Now let's move on into the main. And in the main, <coughs> we are going to do exactly the same as my previous tutorial. So we're going to have a class game and inside of that class game we're going to have many instance functions for the new game to run the game, to update, to check for the events, and to check for drawing. So let's start by importing some stuff in here. So we're gonna import Spy Game, and we're gonna import everything from the settings, import all, and we're gonna import everything from the sprites as well. So import all, and we're also gonna import random we're gonna need the random to randomize the sequence okay so we're gonna start by creating a class game and we're gonna define the constructor for it inside of the constructor we're gonna call the pi game in it and we're gonna create a screen so self dot screen it's gonna be equals to pi game dot display dot set modes and inside here we put a tuple with the width and the height that we set up in here. Okay, <coughs> and we're also gonna have a pygame.display.set uh, caption with the title. And what else do we need in here? Let's create a clock as well. So self the clock is equals to pygame.time.clock. And I think that's all for now. Let's define those instance functions. So new, and we're gonna have a run function. I'm just gonna pass all of them for now. Uh, we're gonna have an update and a draw function and the events the events and well let's just write this event here for the for to quit the window so for event and pi game dot event dot get uh, if the event is event dot type is equals to pi game <coughs> dot quit we will quit the window and we'll quit with the code zero okay and then outside of this class we're just going to create the game object and we're gonna have a while loop in here to go through the new function and the run function okay and uh, let's just go into this run function here and inside of the run function we're going to create a variable called self dot plane we're going to set that to true and then we're going to say while self dot plane we're going to call the clock dot tick and we pass the FPS inside and we're gonna have events self dot draw and self dot update <coughs> okay so let's see if we run this now okay if we run this now we have a window we can drag it 
and we can also close that window and we exit with a code zero okay okay so the next step for this is I think we're gonna go to the sprites class uh, sorry the sprites file let's make the button class first so let's import some stuff in here so we're gonna import uh, we need a pi game and we're gonna import everything from the settings imports all okay, and we're gonna create a class called button and inside of here we're gonna have the constructor for it and we're gonna pass a few parameters in here we're gonna have X and Y for the coordinates of the button where we want to draw them and a color as well okay so let's create those variables so self.x and self.y is equals to X and Y self.color is gonna be equals to the color Okay, we don't need a width and a height for the button because we set them in here as a button size. So we're just going to be using this variable for the width and the height because it's going to be squares anyway. Uh, let's define a function here called draw. And inside of here, we're going to pass the screen which we want to draw to. And inside of the screen, we're going to just draw a simple. Uh, rectangle yes so we're gonna give the screen inside here so pi game dot draw dot rect and then inside here we pass this screen and then we give self dot color and then we have a two point here which is the rectangle so it's gonna be the position of the rectangle so the first two arguments are the top left corner of the rectangle and and then we give it the size so the, the the top the bottom right of the rectangle and it creates the rectangle so in here we're gonna have self.x and self.y and then we're gonna have button size and button size okay so that's the size of it we're also gonna have a, another function here to check if we clicked on that button so we create a function called clicked and as a parameters we're gonna pass the mouse X and the mouse Y okay so the mouse X and the mouse Y we're gonna be taking it from here from the events and we're gonna give it to this function and we're gonna see if we're actually clicking on a button or not and which button we're clicking so inside of here we're just gonna return self X less or equals to mouse x less or equals to self dot x plus button size and self dot y less or equals to mouse y less or equals to self dot y plus button size okay so if the mouse x and y are inside of this rectangle or this square then this will return true if not, then it will return false. That's how we determined if we're actually clicking on a button or not. Okay, so let's uh, go back into the main in here and let's try to draw all of this into the to, into the window. So right now, if I run this, I have a black window. It's nothing in there. So let's uh, create those buttons. So in the constructor, we're just gonna create them in the constructor. It's just a bit easier. So we're gonna have a list in here called self.buttons. And yeah, that's gonna be equals to a list. And inside here, we're just gonna create all the buttons. So the first one, we create an object and we have to pass the X, Y and the color. So the first one, the X is gonna be 110 and 50 for the Y and the color is going to be dark yellow okay the second one is going to be 330 and then 50 for the y and the color is dark uh or is it dark blue and the third one the color is going to be dark reds 
and it's gonna be 110 and the Y is 270 and the fourth button is 330 and the Y is gonna be uh, 270 actually and the color is dark green so I've already made this game as I just show you at, in the beginning so I'm just taking the same coordinates just to be a bit faster but I had to just calculate these coordinates just to make sure they are aligned to each other and they are in a nice grid basically so okay so we have this list in here which contains all the objects for each of the buttons so later we can loop through this list and draw each of them using the draw function and also for the update function we're going to be using that as well Okay, so let's try to draw those buttons in the screen. So let's go into the draw function here where it says pass. We're going to remove that pass. And first thing in here, we're going to call the screen and we're going to fill it with the background color that we set up in the beginning here in the settings. We set background color to the dark gray. Okay, and after that, we're going to call pygame.display.update so we can update the screen. So right now if I run this, now you see the background color is not black anymore, it's this dark gray. Okay, and in the middle here, after we fill the, the, the screen with the background color, we're going to do a for loop in here and we're going to call for button and self.buttons and we're just going to call each button the draw function and we're going to pass the self.screen inside it's where we want to draw each of the buttons so if i run this now okay so now i have those four buttons in there and their colors and everything if i click on them nothing happened yet uh, but we have them in the screen okay so just before we finish this part one I'm going to just set up a few variables that we're going to be using. So just go into the constructor of your game class. Just before the buttons, we're going to create a few lists to hold some of the values. So we're going to have a list for the for the for each of the colors so we can just compare them on the update easily. So just to end this part, let's just create a self.colors list which will hold all the dark colors. So it needs to be on this order as well. So you don't have any problem later. So we put first dark yellow, and then we have dark blue, and then we have dark red, and then we have dark green. Th this list is gonna make a bit more sense a bit later once we start looping through them. And we're also gonna have another list in here called, uh, I guess, flash colors which are going to be the animated colors, like the, the brighter colors. So the same thing is a list and we have to put them in order. So the first one was dark yellow. So the first one here is going to be yellow and then it's going to be blue and then it's going to be red and then green. Okay. And then we're going to have another list in here to hold all the sounds, but that's going to be after we create the audio class. Okay. So that's going to be it for this part one. Yeah, I'll see you on the part two.